Hello friends. The 957 days of the war between Russia and Ukraine continues. The Russian Defense Ministry announced today the capture of Gradivka, a village in the Pokrovsk direction, located southeast of Mernigra. Ukrainian sources have been saying for quite some time that Gradivka has been almost entirely captured. But, according to the deep state map, the northern outskirts of the village are still under the Ukrainian armed forces. Fighting continues west of Novogradivka, where Russian units are trying to advance and cut off the Pokrovsk Siladovy Highway. Here, the Russians have about three kilometers left to the highway, after which this road will be physically cut off. At the same time, with such a maneuver, Russian troops are trying to encircle Siladovy from the north, while simultaneously creating a bridgehead for an offensive on Pokrovsk from the south. Tiladovy itself is apparently awaiting a Vuladar scenario. The enemy has adopted the tactic of encircling populated areas, which forces the Ukrainian armed forces to retreat from them. It is worth admitting that the general staff cannot yet put forward an adequate defense model to counter such enemy maneuvers. Fighting is already underway throughout the farm in the western part of Sukhirini. At the same time, Ukrainian forces are forced to slowly retreat from this territory. At the same time, Russian units entered Novoslidivka to the south. Clashes have also been going on in Izmailivka for several days, where the enemy is attacking from the west and pressing from the north. Thus, the Ukrainian garrisons of Hernik and Kurakivka, if the Russians manage to break through the defense of Novoslidivka and Izmailivka, may find themselves surrounded. In the meantime, Ukrainian troops have begun digging new defense lines around Pokrovsk. They are also being built for the first time on the road to the Dnipro. This is reported by OSINT researcher Clement Mollen. The new line has recently been running along the border of the Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk regions. Apparently, it is being dug between Mejova and Slovyanka, two important cities, the analyst writes. To the east of Kurakovi over the weekend, there was an advance of the Russians in Maximilianivka, and also to the north the Russians pushed the Ukrainian armed forces west in the area of the Nevelsky pocket. In the south of the Donetsk region, there was an assault on the village of Zolithon Neva, west of Vuladar, and on the approaches to Velika Novosilka. This was reported by the Ukrainian military. Some Russian telegram channels write about successful reconnaissance in force, and others even about the capture of Zolotan Neva. Now, judging by the Ukrainian maps, Zolotan Neva is less than a kilometer from the Russian positions, and the village itself is located in the gray zone. It is worth adding that in the evening the enemy published a video with its flag from the village. Also, Ukrainian military telegram channels today wrote about the attack of Russian troops on Kamiansky in the Zeporizhia region. They report that the Russians entered Kamiansky but were driven out. Russian telegram channels claim that the battle for Kamiansky continues. The enemy's published video shows that soldiers of the Ukrainian armed forces, having taken up positions in a building, are fighting with attacking Russian units. Judging by the footage, Russian troops are actively shelling the positions of the Ukrainian garrison there, including with the help of drones. The map of the Ukrainian resource deep state has not yet recorded any Russian advances in this area. One way or another, it is obvious that the Russians are intensifying their actions on the southern front, which is strategically important for the course of the entire war. The Russians have significantly improved their position in the Cupians' direction in a week, said Kovalenko, an expert at information resistance. As for the liaman kupiansk axis, the Russian occupiers have significantly improved their position in the direction of the western bank of the Oskil River in a week. And they continue to move mainly focusing on Kolosnikivka. Thus there is a threat that in the near future, the Russians will make every effort to reach Kolosnikivka, said Kovalenko. According to him, in this section of the front, the Russian command does not set any deadlines for its military, and does not drive them in the back. 
Today, a video from the enemy side appeared with the hanging of the Russian flag on the territory of the Vovchansk aggregate plant in the Kharkov border area. If the video is authentic, then this means that the Russians have regained control over the aggregate plant, which was recently recaptured by the armed forces of Ukraine. In the Kursk region, according to data from the Ukrainian side, the enemy advanced in the southern part of the Kultura tract and on the western outskirts of Ubyamovka in an area up to 5.7 kilometers wide. The Deep State Telegram channel writes that, unfortunately, the enemy continues to press and has some tactical successes. Overall, events on the front, as many admit, continue to develop negatively for the Ukrainian troops. Military expert Passy Peroinen believes that after Ukraine's Kursk offensive, Russia has been advancing in the Donbas at an unprecedented pace since 2022. Over the past two months, Russia has captured about 270 square miles in the area, which is about three times the amount taken in June and July. But the question of whether this means that the Ukrainian armed forces front has begun to collapse is debatable. The American newspaper New York Times, for example, writes, citing Ukrainian commanders, that Ukraine, gradually retreating in the Donbas, is exhausting the Russian army and forcing it to suffer major losses. And the British Times believes that next year Kiev may form forces for a new large-scale offensive, while this year it has been holding back Russian attacks. I would like to point out two signs of why the situation may approach catastrophic. Firstly, if the Russians break through towards the Dnipro and Zaporizhia from the east, as well as from the south, with a subsequent exit, on a wide front to the borders of the Zaporizhia and Dnipropetrovsk regions. The direction to the Dnipro and Zaporizhia is strategically important for the course of the war. The logistics of the Ukrainian armed forces on half of the entire front are based on these cities. The road to the western bank and to central Ukraine opens through them. Therefore, the Ukrainian command will throw all possible reserves here. And if the front in this area cannot be held, this will mean that the reserves are completely depleted and the situation is developing according to the worst-case scenario for Ukraine. The second indicator of how problematic the current situation is for the Ukrainian armed forces is the Kursk region. By all indications, it remains a priority area of attention for the Ukrainian leadership, and reserves are sent there on a priority basis. Moreover, in some areas the Ukrainian army continues to attack there. And, if the front of the Ukrainian armed forces crumbles in the Kursk region, this will be an indicator that the state of the Ukrainian reserves no longer allows solving priority tasks. So far, both indicators do not indicate that the Ukrainian front is completely collapsing, and the Ukrainian armed forces have lost their combat capability. Although it is difficult to deny the rapid advance of the Russians in Donbas, and unfortunately, the situation can deteriorate sharply at any moment. Friends, this channel exists solely thanks to your support. If you have the opportunity and desire to support the channel, I will be very grateful to you. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.